It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Hi. Welcome to High Noon with David. <clears throat> this is show number 324. Here to bring you a gift. Gift of boldness. Boldness to believe. If I can get you believing right, we can take care of everything else. This book, called the B-I-B-L-E, the best-selling book in the history of the world. That some say that it stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. I read last week... <clears throat> out of uh, 2 Corinthians 6, and I thought I was going to back up to verse ch to chapter 5, but I'm going to continue on, but I'm going to read it again. And I'm using the message translation. I know it's a paraphrase, but you get out your King Jimmy or your King James, whichever you want to call it, and get out your Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and study the Greek words. Do it. I love doing a word study. I can do a word study in about two and a half minutes. And uh, I loved searching, and, you know, I used the original Amplified, the Passion Translation. I used King James, I, you know, whichever one you like. There's so many of them. <clears throat> but go study the Greek and the Hebrew words, and anybody can do that. You can Google on your smartphone and ask any Bible question, and it'll pop up the Scriptures for you. It's so easy to seek God nowadays if you desire to. And I'm here to stir your hunger up. So, let's uh, pop over to 2 Corinthians 6. <clears throat> and I'm going to kind of step in the middle of it and not read the whole thing from last week. But I want to continue on. It says, Ignored by the world, but recognized by God, Terrifically alive. I love the way he says this. Though rumored to be dead, beaten within an inch of our lives, but in, but refusing to die, immersed in tears, yet always filled with deep joy. This is about uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 7, somewhere in there. Filled with deep joy. Living on handouts, yet enriching many, having nothing, having it all. Dear, dear Corinthians, and here's what I want to get to. I can, can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. I love that. See, too many people are under the law. I told one pastor told me <clears throat> years ago, and I thought he was giving me a compliment, <laughs> and evidently he was not. <clears throat> he said, "When you ministered in my church, you broke every ministerial rule." And I went, "Awesome!" <laughs> I, thought that was, I thought that was the best compliment because there's so many churches. And denominations and groups that say you can't do this, you can't do that, and you can't do that, and you can't do this. Well, they're not being successful at it. Oh boy. Here we go. Dear, <clears throat> dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you. This, you can write your name. Scratch out you and write your name in there because God is not a respecter of persons. Here we go. How I long for you to enter the wide open spacious life. We didn't fence you in. Woo! The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small. But you're living them in a small way. I'm speaking as plainly as I can with and with great affection. Open up your lives. Live openly 
and expansively. You know, uh, when I lived in Southern California, I was just minding my own business one day, sitting in Denny's restaurant, talking to a guy that had heard about me and wanted to talk about evangelism and going in the prisons. I love preaching in the prisons. I've preached on death row at one time in the largest prison in the United States. It was one of the warmest groups I ever spoke to was the folks on death row. And uh, love, love being there. Well, I was in Denny's in Southern California, in particular Huntington Beach, California. <clears throat> Boy, did I have a great time out there. Everybody warned me, don't go out there. They're not going to receive you. You're a country hick from Holmes County, Mississippi. <clears throat> and I waited on the Lord, and he said, get your butt out there, boy. I said, yes, sir. And I went on to Orange County, California, Huntington Beach. Love it out there. I was on the beach a lot. In fact, being a country boy from Mississippi, I had a better tan than a lot of those people out there laying on the beach did. And uh, that was very impressive to them. Of course, I talked real funny to them. I thought they talked funny, to be be honest. But I get out there, and I'm sitting in Denny's restaurant talking to a guy about prison ministry. And uh, this guy comes and squats down beside me. <clears throat> he, he'd overheard me talking. And I firmly believe the Holy Spirit does that so many times. He'll magnify your voice so people can hear and get blessed. And he squats down beside me and with tears. He said, dude, I'm a plumber. And I spend my whole paycheck every week on cocaine. I said, get in the booth, boy. And I, I prayed with him, ministered the gospel to him. Prayed with him to receive Jesus. He calls I gave him my phone number. And I know a lot of preachers say, well, I won't give mine out. Well, I will as I'm led. I hope you listen to me. <laughs> and at midnight, I get a call. And I answer the phone. Hello. I mean, I was sound asleep. And it's this same plumber. He said, dude. I know I shouldn't have gone back to the bar, but I, and, and I thought, no, you should have. <clears throat> now, see, I know that goes against religious thinking. This guy's friends were all at the bar. And he went back to the bar, and he's telling this one little lady what happened to him in Denny's restaurant that afternoon at 2 o'clock in Huntington Beach, California. And as he's talking to this one lady about what happened to him, talking to this freak from Mississippi that talks funny. He looked up and everybody in the bar they was standing around him listening. And then they started asking him questions about God. And he said, well, I just met him today. <laughs> I don't know. Why. And so he calls me from the bar at midnight. I mean, somewhere around midnight. I mean, who cares if it was three minutes after or three minutes before. He said, dude, can you meet with us tomorrow at Denny's at 2? I said, heck yeah, I can. I get thrilled when people want something from Jesus. It just thrills me. And so at 2 the next day, I'm sitting there, and the first guy, they bring a Jewish male strip dancer and set him down, and I'm like, and he said, I have a grandmama that lives in a kibbutz in Israel. And I didn't know what a kibbutz was. I didn't know if that was barbecue or a house or what it was. And I've since learned. And uh, and, I said, and in my own inside, I said, Lord, what, what, what am I going to say to this guy? I don't know anything about it. Just tell a Jew. He said, shut up and share the gospel. Romans 1, 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for the gospel is the power unto salvation. Nothing else. And so I just started breaking the bread of life to this guy and told him about Jesus and how to receive Jesus. And I didn't try to straighten him out. I just kicked the tripod. Uh, I'm the techie man and the sound man and the camera man and the fix my own biscuit man around here. And so I just broke the bread of life to him. 
And he prayed to receive Jesus. And with tears in his eyes, and you can't go, sometimes I've been in meetings where people went to the altar and blew snot and shed tears, and then they went, went and had no change. But this guy with tears shook my hand and said, Dude, I feel clean on the inside. So as soon as I got done praying with him, they sit somebody else down. And they brought, I think it was six people came from the bar. Might have been more, I don't know. So we started at two, and for three hours, once got through the bunch from the bar, other customers with tears says, could I be next? And, and they just kept putting people in the little booth that I was sitting in in Denny's restaurant. And for three hours, I prayed for people. And I believe it was six out of that bunch was in our church on Sunday morning. I hope you're listening to me. <sighs> See, there, there's one thing about Jesus. If you'll, if you'll not look at Him through Catholic eyes, Presbyterian eyes, Southern Baptist eyes, Lutheran eyes, Jewish eyes, Buddha's eyes, Mohammed's eyes, but look at Him through the eyes of God. Look at Jesus through the eyes of Holy Spirit, through the eyes of the Word. Because the Bible says the Spirit and the Word agree. And, and, and look at how Jesus responded to people that came looking to Him to help them. Oh, oh my. It, it, it's There's a guy that... Uh, carried the cross around the world he's in the guinness world book of records he's a mississippi boy raised up around greenwood mississippi name's arthur blessed he's carried the cross so much one collarbone is normal size and the other one's that thick where he had the cr carried the cross most of the time and and i've gotten i've been on christian tv one time with arthur blessed it was a tremendous thing and i've got a personal note i got from him a few months ago He's, I think he's 83 now, living in Colorado, and uh, I've got it framed. And this friend, um, Ellie Rose, out of the Southern California, is close friends with Arthur, and she uh, told him, uh, you know, I just, and it, it just, he, he was one of my mentors. He and Kenneth E. Hagen are my two main mentors in life, all these years, and. Uh, Arthur, Arthur made the statement that if you don't know how to lead somebody to Jesus, just look toward them and fall and Holy Spirit will do the rest. And he did something strange. The Lord said, I want you to carry the cross around the world. And of course, people say, they, they criticize me for doing it. And they say, well, Jesus ain't on the cross. Well, would you look at this cross I'm carrying? It ain't got a Jesus on it. I'm just, it had a bicycle wheel on the end. And it's just a tool to break the ice to share Jesus with people. I carried it from Gulfport, Mississippi on the Gulf Coast and came through the center of the state up small highways where people could stop and interact with me. And man, I had so much fun. I, I preached in public high schools up and down the state and I got the entire student body and all the teaching staff and the coaches every time except for one time. And I think we missed getting 10 of them, 10 of the kids, young people. And, uh, <clears throat> but Arthur looked up, had this cross hanging on the wall, and he put a bicycle wheel on it just as a shock absorber so it wouldn't beat you up when you're carrying the thing. And he went all over the world. And God, he, he was on TBN one time and announced that we're going witnessing in the morning at Hollywood and Vine in Hollywood, California, and 10,000 people showed up to go witnessing with him. That's the kind of influence he had. He still does today. And, boy, this show's going by so fast. And I'm telling you that when people come up to you and, and, and looking for something from God, the spirit of faith is so strong on me. But if somebody comes up and wants to argue and fuss about something, one big old splat. Now, I've had people want to argue, and I've had the words from Holy Spirit and just broke it wide open for them. That's the reason we walk in love, and we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me continue reading here before I get myself in trouble. Now, listen, this is, we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, midway of the chapter. And this is a message. 
don't become partners. Boy, this is so good. Don't become partners with those who reject God. How can you make a partnership, <clears throat> excuse me, out of right and wrong? That's not partnership. That's war. Ooh. Is light best friends with dark? Does Christ go strolling with the devil? Do trust and mistrust hold hands? Boy, this is rich. Who would think of setting up pagan idols in God's holy temple? But that is exactly what we are, each of us, as a temple in whom God lives. God himself put it this way. I'll live in David Dixon, or I'll live in Betty, or I'll live in whatever your name is. Move into them. I'll be their God, and they'll be my people. So leave the corruption and compromise. Leave it for good, says God. Don't link up with those who will pollute you. I want you all for myself. I'll be a father to you. And you'll be sons and daughters to me. The word of the master. God. And that's a letter written to you. You know, uh, they say, I don't know, I, I, statistics, they say statistics show that most people who become believers within two years have lost all their lost friends. No, they have this little bubble of believers that they're around. And it's just like this guy that led to the Lord in Denny's that day. He went right back to the bar. And he was evangelizing without even knowing it. And I'll never forget uh, when we were at the Denny's the next day. This girl that was operating, one of the waitresses operating the pie counter. This, you know, back then they had this section of bar stools for the pie counter. And this guy is overhearing me talk about Jesus to these people. And he's crying, and the waitress comes over, and this guy's over here. She says, this guy's over here crying and wants to know what, what does he have to do to be saved. And I told this waitress what to go pray with him. And uh, <laughs> she did. And then she got saved. And she ended up in the church and became a leader in the church. Oh, it was glorious. <laughs> that, that just You can't think that stuff up. <laughs> And I, 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 I am I, I, I exhort you so strongly. They say, Lord, just say, come and invade my heart. Even if you've been a believer a long time, say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Ooh, the strong words, man. I've had to. I've had to. Charles Cap said that. Uh, he was talking to the Lord one time. He said, well, Lord, I'm a praying. I'm, and the Lord said, no, you're not praying. You're complaining. <laughs> and I thought, uh-oh. And I've done, and I've just had, this times I've just had, had to just humble myself and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm so great. And I am. I am so grateful for this life. I'm so grateful for this journey that I've been on all these years. <clears throat> I'm so grateful to know you, Lord Jesus. I'm getting to know you better every day. And the peace and the joy, it, 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 sh it almost should be illegal to feel this great and to have such joy. Oh, no, yeah, I have my challenges. I have, of course. I go through stuff. But I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Just like Vacation Bible School, man. I tell you what, I, I, if you ever think you're working so hard for Vacation Bible School out of your church... Man, you don't you dare feel that way. Because I tell you what, what an influence. And I'm so glad my parents made me go every summer. Ooh. They they were very wise. And um, I know it's very religious here in the southeastern United States where I'm from. But the other side of it is there's a bunch of us that are born again, that have been saved, received Jesus by grace through faith. And it is the free thing. It's not something that you work in yourself into. Oh, boy. I quit. 
I ask people all the time, say, well, you've been behaving. They go, well, I'm trying. I go, well, I ain't trying. I'm done. I'm done. I, I change families. You say, folks folks say that, well, you just, I just can't believe that somebody can squat beside you in a booth at Denny's and crying and you can pray with them and they got saved. I just, I just can't believe it's that easy. Well, believe it because it is that easy. It is that simple. I ended up going, it, 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 of course, I've done some things. I look back on, boy, I, I was dumb on some things I've done. In fact, on a lot of things I've done. But I went with him. He was living in a drug dealer's house, and I walked in there, and they're cutting out with a razor blade cocaine on the coffee table and snorting cocaine. Well, I'm waiting on him to gather up his stuff, and I helped him move out of the drug dealer's house. And I just sitting there smiling, and I'm thinking, yeah, you better get the hmm out of here, boy. <laughs> and uh, he started on a new journey. I hope you're listening to me today. In fact, he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in unknown tongues. <clears throat> he went on a, on a truck driving trip, came back. He was messed up. He said, well, I said, what happened? He said, I went to a Pentecostal church. and Because I was a visitor, they put me on the front row next to the pastor. And I raised my hand and started singing in unknown tongues. And the pastor said, well, how long have you been speaking in tongues? He said, three days. And he said, there ain't no way you could have a prayer language that beautiful after three days. It's got to be the devil. And I had to walk him back through the word again. And, uh, and it, it, that right there proved that he had the real deal because the religious folks couldn't handle the real deal showing up. That's what messed the Jews up. The real deal named Jesus showed up with real power, real healings, real miracles. And guess what? They are still here for today. You desire to know this Jesus you know, people say there ain't nothing free in life. Well, yes, there is. He is. Here we go. Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10 says, What say it that the word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith that we preach. That if you'll say, Jesus is Lord, do that right now. Say, Jesus is Lord. If you believe in your heart, do that right now. Say, I choose to believe. Jesus, you died for me, and God raised you from the dead. Well, if you do that, you're saved. Well, I, what? Well, shut up. Leave it alone. I just gave you word. I'm going to have to go in just a minute so I can come right back. But say this after me. Say, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Father God, you see me as holy, flawless, and restored because of the blood of Jesus. Ooh, that's good news. You know, you get a hold of that. You drop a lot of bad things out of your life. All right. Love you. I'll be right back. Back again. One of the funniest, and I've had this happen so many times. I've done hundreds of seminars on how to win people to Jesus around the world. And uh, we did a church in Bowden, Georgia. Yep. Took them, took them, you know, shared for two or three days and then took them on the streets. And and so I t encouraged everybody to go to the people they prayed with that afternoon and get them to the service that night. <laughs> and so I'm interviewing these people that have just been prayed with. You know, they're in church and, and you know, they've been drinking whiskey that afternoon and they've been doing all kind of stuff because that's what they was used to doing. You know, when you get saved, you don't just drop everything out of your life. It's the spirit that you are get saved. You still got flesh. And in fact, I know people that drink whiskey and beer and wine in moderation. And religious folks want to kill them over it. But religious folks eat food like they're going to quit making it this afternoon. And, and the word says, put a knife to your throat. Well, I don't see them having knife seminars on how to how to lose weight by putting a knife to your throat. They don't want to preach on that side of it. But I interviewed this girl that had prayed with one of the teams that went out door to door and <laughs> on the streets. And so I said, well, what's your favorite song? You know, <laughs> I didn't even. It, and she said, well, it's the one by Aerosmith. This dude looked like a lady. <laughs> and I lost it. The whole church lost it because we just brought in somebody. 
from the outside, from the world. And they still got to get their minds renewed to the Word. And it was just, it was just, and I'll tell you another one. One church bust in a bunch of uh, inner city kids to church on Easter. And the pastor had his lapel mic on right here. And, and you know, this big mega church, thousands of people there on Easter morning, all dressed up for Easter, you know. And he bends over this little girl that had her on the front row and they said, well, that is the most beautiful Easter dress I ever saw. And the little girl spoke up. She's about six years old. Said, yeah, but mama said it's a bitch to iron. And that whole church, to their credit, rolled laughing so hard. Look, if you think you're so holy that you can't go out there in the world and reach somebody and hear some cuss words and maybe have somebody spit some snuff on the ground by you or are you witness to them while they smoking a reefer married you want i did a marijuana wedding one time i was telling reminding my telling my daughter about it. she said daddy i was with you and i we, we went up in there and then they, people said you really married that couple but i didn't go there to beat them up to beat the hell out of them because of what they're doing i went in there to share the gospel i went in there to share jesus with them okay i got to do this real quick my, I've got one of my consultants, one of my gurus, so to speak, jokingly. They tell me, David, you forget to let people know they how to support you. So here's how you can do it. I, I am a nonprofit, tax exempt. What is it? Five hundred one C three. Nonprofit tax exempt organization. I'm in good stead with the state of Mississippi and the United States of America. And I don't know about Iran and Russia and China and Cuba, and but you can send a check and and make the check out to DDM stands for David Dixon Ministries. I've been at this 43 years, living by faith. PO Box 1788, Madison, MS for Mississippi, zip code 391. Three zero. There it is right there. You can snap a picture with your phone. It's on daviddixon.org, which is across my chest right now. Or you can text to 44321. And what you can write in in the message is be bold. And then follow the prompts. And it'll tell you what to do. So you, so you can send the check to DDM, P.O. Box 1788, Madison, Mississippi, 39130, and make it out to DDM. Or you can text to 44321, Be Bold. I know you want to help. We're expanding. We're growing. We just The band's just warming up here. So say this after me again. Say, Jesus loves me. This I know. Say it again. It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.